Hello, friends. Welcome back to the BGE Cloud Podcast. I am your humble host, Amber Bruce, and it's Friday, so you know what that means. It's time for another episode of The Plus in Pageantry. And as you can see, things are a little bit different today. I am rolling solo. So today we're going to discuss my experience at the World Ambassador Competition just last week. So I'm trying to stay on top of this for y'all and give you guys the information as soon as I get it. I will introduce myself again. My name is Amber Bruce. I am the host of BGE Cloud Podcast and the owner of the Empress Suite Formal Wear Boutique. I have other accolades under my belt, such as being the choreographer for Northwest Pageant Productions, and I assist with the production of the Global Beauty Awards. So I am very excited to talk about my experience at the World Ambassador Competition. Um, And if you're thinking about competing or thinking of a good place to start, feel free to let me know and I'll do everything I can to help you. So first and foremost, the World Ambassador Competition. So this is a pageant um, under the same umbrella um, and leadership as the USA Ambassador Competition. I participated in USA Ambassador uh, years ago. Um, I think... Oof, maybe seven or eight years ago. Um, somewhere I'll say somewhere between six and eight years ago. Boom, we'll go with that. And I had a really great time. It was in Tampa, Florida. Um, there were lizards at the um, condominium resort where the where the pageant was hosted. It had multiple tiers and age groups that were offered even back then. Um, it's a practice that they have carried on even now, which I think is lovely. Um, and yeah, I really loved the leadership. I had a great experience there. Um, I believe mom accompanied me with going to that pageant and we had a ball, um, on site. One thing that sticks out to me about my experience with USA ambassador is, um, I think at the end of the preliminary competition, I had a zipper break and we had to figure out what we were going to do. I believe I was sewn into it for prelims. And then I had to be cut out of the dress. Um, And then between shows, my mom and I had to go and find a new dress. So that was one of the chaotic things. That was was the pageant where I learned to always bring a backup. Um, So, you know, it's never never failures, just lessons, y'all. And I think I won my first spoke model award at that pageant. So great time. Uh, I liked the way that the pageant was formatted. I didn't return and I can't quite remember exactly why, Um, but I've seen friends go through that pageant system and have really great success. So um, years later, when I saw that they were doing World Ambassador, initially what I thought was that World Ambassador was a, um, a, a higher title. So I thought it was going to be at the USA Ambassador pageant and they were just going to award two titles. But then I did a little bit more research and I saw World Ambassador was its own separate entity um, branded as a fashion forward, a happy combination of modeling and pageantry, which of course I loved. Um, it, It was marketed as a fashion forward experience, which being the owner of a formal wear boutique, And, you know, having the history with fashion that I do, having gone to school for fashion design and just been a lover of fashion my entire life, this was something that really made sense for me. Um, And one of the tips that I often give to folks who inquire, you know, how do I get started? Where do I go? I always tell folks what you need to do is you need to find a pageant that um, makes you feel whole something that checks all your boxes, something that aligns with your views, your interests, um, and what you're willing to do as a title holder, because essentially you're weak um, at the pageant, you're weak or weekend at the pageant, you're, you're in a job interview. So you need to be able to perform the duties required. So do I like to model? Yes, I quite enjoy modeling. Do I love fashion? Yes, I quite, en- lo- I quite enjoy and love fashion. So, you know, those two boxes were checked for me. I know that um, USA Ambassador has a uh, service commitment to um, multiple organizations. 
And I expected the same of World Ambassador. So I figured I would still be able to get my community service in. I checked the criteria. I met the criteria as far as age and um, gender and things like that. And then I also looked at what the scoring was going to be comprised of. So there was to be a interview of sorts, a panel um, speaking experience that was to be streamed live on social media. And I loved that. So that was supposed to be scored at 30%. There was an evening gown, a fun fashion, and, or branded runway, excuse me. <laughs> and um, also a fitness competition. And each of those were going to garner 20% and then 10% was to be left up to social media. As y'all have heard me say before, y'all know I have a love-hate relationship with social media, but I really wanted to dig deep, push through, and post as I figured they wanted their title holder to post, which is obviously like a great strategy, right? You want to be able to ensure that you can do the job being asked of you. So in my prep, I definitely practiced my runway walk. I thought about my wardrobe. I practiced speaking by, you know, getting folks to interview here on the BGE cloud. And as I was growing my business, I had a lot of opportunities to speak about pageantry and everything that it's done for me and all the different doors that it's opened. So plenty of time speaking. I did not consult a coach this go round. However, I have been coached in the past and I just kind of took those techniques and applied them to my pageant prep this go around. Um, going, uh, so my prep was relatively easy. I did push myself uh, as far as high heels. So I have a love hate relationship with heels. I can't wear tippy tops because the front of my foot is too wide. So I found a strappy tippy top like shoe that I actually carry here at the Empress Suite. And I practice runway. Whenever I didn't have an appointment here uh, at the boutique, I practice runway. Whenever I had a free second at home, I was in my shoes, you know, practicing going up and down stairs. Side note, pageants. I know the stairs look beautiful. I know it looks good on camera, but stop it. You hear me? Stop it. I hate stairs. Like, oof. Anywho, that was my own little rant. But yeah, so I did everything I could to make sure that I felt comfortable in my shoes. And by the time I got to Florida, um, I could wear any of the pairs of the shoes that I packed and felt fine. I didn't even have immense pain afterwards. So though I am, <laughs> I am wearing my slippers. <laughs> I am wearing my slippers today. So let's stop the cat. Okay, my feet did hurt. I'm a liar. Okay. Um, <laughs> So anyway, uh, traveling to Florida is always an adventure, given that I live in Washington State. So I, um, <laughs> I really just showed you on my foot. That is so funny. So um, I did. I opted for a straight through flight because you know I couldn't do the down up, down up, down up thing. Um, I think it was just over four, five hours. Excuse me. And going into Florida, there was a whole lightning storm, babes. I thought it was going to be the end for me, but, you know, my pilot did his big one. Um, and then I was actually traveling by myself this time around, which I absolutely hated, did not like it, would 10 out of 10 would not recommend, don't do it. Um, especially for something like this, where having the support of your family makes all the difference, but put a pin in that, we'll get back to it in a minute. Um, but yeah, other than the lightning coming in, flight was really, really smooth. And I easily got to the resort, which we had the privilege of staying at the Margaritaville Resort um, in Orlando, which was really nice, though my room had ants. Um, and it did take them a while to come and address that. But once they did, I didn't have any other issues. Um, I will complain about Florida's weather. It was an adjustment period for me. Uh, it was like, it felt like the second I stepped out of my room, I was like sticky for audio listeners. I'm, I'm using my hands to illustrate, um, uh, what was going on there. Um, but 
uh, aside from that, the resort was beautiful. The resort was absolutely beautiful. Um, even on a couple of days where it was a little bit rainy and gray, the resort was absolutely beautiful. They were doing this Christmas in July thing. <laughs> and so they had this giant flip flop um, and it was dressed in a Santa hat. And I walked by and I was like, oh, y'all lazy with the decorations. Y'all out here got this sandal with the Santa hat on. Y'all just leave it up year round was my thought. And um, then I heard later that they were doing the special like Margaritaville uh, Christmas in July. Margaritas are X percent off kind of a thing. And I was like, oh, OK. Uh, I was like, I was like, we love a theme. We love a theme. All right. And then uh, one of the staff told me later that they are constantly dressing that flip flop up in different attire. So like they'll dress up for Halloween and any other holidays or festivities that they want to throw, which I thought was really, really cute. Um, registration went over well. I obviously planned, 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 checklist, checklist, checklist. So I had everything I needed um, at registration. From there, we were able to go and pick a dress to model, or we were supposed to pick two dresses, but the girlies got in the way for me picking two. So I ended up picking one dress. Um, it was gold. It was beautiful. I'm pretty sure it was a Giovanni um, because we were the models for the fashion show from the sponsored um, gown boutique who was sponsoring the pageant. So that was really fun. I liked that. I had a good time doing that. And then what else happened? Oh my gosh. Um, we had rehearsal, which I always, I love rehearsal. It's the best opportunity that you have to get to know the other contestants and to get to know staff and kind of build a rapport and some comfortability with each other. Um, we had a small group for a international pageant. It was a small group. I think there were 16 or 17 of us. Um, so. Yeah, uh, there were four total Miss contestants, I think, two Miss contestants, and then the rest were teen and um, preteen. Oh, so yeah, it was really, really intimate, and I, I like that. It gives you the opportunity to, to speak with your fellow man and try to unite over a joint experience. All of the outgoing queens were phenomenal, really, really nice. Whenever we had questions, it was easy to walk up to them and ask them. And if they didn't have the answer on hand, it was just as easy to find a staff member and ask them. And if they didn't have the answer, it was just as easy to, <laughs> to find another staff member. And um, everybody just really, really worked diligently to get you everything that you needed, which I certainly appreciated. So that was nice. And what else? I had a photo shoot, optional photo shoot in my swimwear. And I got one of those corset back swimsuits that I had been putting off for so long because pageantry is, you know, it's subjective. You know, your judges are looking at things from their trained eye, from their experience. And you never really, you, it's sometimes hard to gauge what the judge is like. And when you're someone who doesn't necessarily fit the traditional pageantry mold, whether it's, you know, you're wearing big voluptuous hair or you're just a big voluptuous woman, um, it's very easy to get trapped in your own head. Like, you know, will the judges like this? Will they think it's too much? Is it, is it this? Is it that? And uh, anytime that I enter a swim competition or a pageant where the criteria swim is required, swim is required in the criteria, then I'm always like, if I wear, if I'm, you know, show up in my size 16 body and I decide to wear a two piece, will that read as confident or will it read as unflattering? So my rule of thumb is to always go with what's most flattering. Um, I look good in everything I put on and that's on period. Uh, <laughs> so me being comfortable is 99% of the battle and then finding something that looks flattering on stage is the other part. So it's important to know your body type and the colors and the fits that just look good on you. And this is not even from like your own personal bias. Don't be afraid to ask your friends and family, you know, 
choose between A and B, which one looks better, which one looks better. And I'm good for that. I will send a headshot out quick and be like, hey, between A, B and C, which one do you think should be my headshot? Because I love myself and I think I look good in everything. So uh, (laughs) I think it's a win every time. But sometimes it does take somebody from the outside looking in to be like, okay, you know, beautiful, stunning. But I think this option is going to look better on you. So consult your friends and family, utilize your circle um, to help you make your wardrobe choices and your your photo submission choices. And that's exactly what I did. So I did submit for um, photogenic and I did the swim photo shoot, which our photographer was absolutely amazing, um, was great. Excuse me was great directing the shoot and just really, really awesome with helping to realize the vision that I already had in my head. Like when I was thinking about the swimsuit uh, swimsuit shoot, I originally wanted to do something outside, like in the sand, like giving very Sports Illustrated, but that was just kind of like beyond our wheelhouse. So we ended up doing something more like a studio shoot, but I still was adamant about being barefoot, you know, just to give what it needed to give. So that was really awesome. Um, And then outside of the shoot, we had another rehearsal and interview and me and the outgoing queen actually showed up in the same suit for interview, which I adore because, you know, great minds think alike. And I had a four minute interview with the panel of judges that I believe went well. (laughs) I believe went well, but who really knows? Um, I had fun answering their questions and just telling them about all the ways that I am invested in the empowerment and growth of women and how I am so deep rooted into this community that I love that is pageantry through platforms like this, like my podcast, through social media, through my business here at the Emperor Suite. So it was nice. It was very, very nice. And I liked having just like, I liked, I don't know, every, every few years I go back and forth between if I like round robin or if I like a uh, panel style. And so for those of you who don't know, round robin style interviewing is like speed dating. So you go in, judges are sat at their own individual stations, and then the contestants will rotate through till they've had the opportunity to interview with each individual judge. Um, When you go and you do a panel style interview, it's like presenting to the class. Your judges are sat before you and they'll ask you questions um, and then you'll answer. So more often than not, I favor a um, round robin style interview because I think that it gives you more opportunity to just kind of get to know each individual judge. I think sometimes when you have a panel interview, uh, some judges don't have the opportunity to ask the questions that are most important to them. Uh, And so they're kind of in a space where they have to decide, you know, their feelings about your performance based off of what the other judges prioritize, prioritize asking you. So I go back and forth, but this was a really fun, laid back um, panel style interview, quite enjoyed it. Uh, and then, yeah, it was basically showtime and we just had a final. We didn't have a preliminary and a final. Um, we had a I love a walking pattern opening number, you know, Uh, That's usually what my shows consist of when I'm choreographing. So I definitely was in full support of that. And um, the show was beautiful. It went very, very well. Um, We performed opening number in our runway outfits and then was able to go straight into performing our runway routines. Um, I had a little incident. So one of the girls coming out behind me in opening number ended up stepping on uh, the cape that I was going to wear for my uh, runway performance, which really wasn't a big deal. Um, I did it because I didn't want to go out in just a flat dress. And I was like, okay, I'll just add a cape and let that be that. 
but the dress was beautiful on its own. I wasn't trying to conceal anything like a zipper that wouldn't zip or anything like that. So it wasn't like there was something wrong with just going out in the dress. It, I believe it's a, it was a, a sequin Ash Lauren silver um, mock neck situation and it had fringe across the bottom. So it was still like a branded runway-esque dress. So it didn't shake me. I didn't feel bad. I wasn't mad at the young lady who stepped on it. It was just one of those things that happens and you have to be able to roll with the punches like that. Um, fitness, I didn't feel as confident in fitness and I'm not a hundred percent sure why. Um, you know, I've competed and swim multiple times. This is my first time competing in fitness specifically. And, um, I would have thought that I would be I would feel more secure because I'm more covered than I would be in a swimsuit, but it just didn't give that. So I did not feel a hundred percent in fitness, but my little outfit was cute. You know, it's like this kind of like tangerine color. It was cute. It was cute. I mean, uh, it was cute. Um, and let's see here. And then there was evening gown. So I brought two gowns. I brought a gown from the Empress Suite, a Giovanni gown from the Empress Suite that I tried on on my YouTube channel. So if you have been watching on YouTube, then you saw me try the dress on and decide that I was going to take it with me. And then I had a um, Portia and Scarlet gown that I am just head over heels in love with. Absolutely in love with. I don't carry Portia and Scarlet in the boutique yet but it's definitely something, one of the designers that's on my list that I do want to build a relationship with. But um, I love this gown and I just wanted to give it another moment. So this was the second time I've worn it in a pageant. And when I tell you baby girl wouldn't zip, when I tell you it took three people to get me into that gown and that I couldn't breathe, yeah. 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 That happened. So I'm interested to see what I actually look like in the gown because um, there were people in the back helping us. Um, and thank you guys so much for helping me get in and out of that dress. Um, there are people in the back who are helping us. However, I didn't have a mirror. I didn't bring a mirror with me and I just squandered any opportunity to look at myself before I went out. So I prayed that it was stunning when I stepped out, obviously, because I feel like I feel bonita in that dress. Like you can't tell me otherwise. Um, so absolutely love that dress. Um, and yeah, evening gown went over well. I felt beautiful. I felt like, you know, I left it all on the stage at that point. We came back on stage for special awards. Um, and your girl won best in swim. Oh, and, um, and because I am who I am, full transparency, um, to my best knowledge, I'm the only one who did the swim optionals. So best in swim were the only one I brought home a trophy. So it is what it is. Um, and then we had crowning and I am honored to say congratulations to all of the world ambassador queens you guys did an amazing job and i am so excited to follow your year and see the great and magnificent things you guys do with your time i was awarded first runner up in the ms division so that was really really cool for me i actually that's the highest placement i've ever gotten at a national or international pageant so i'm very proud of myself very proud of my performance I'm not quite sure. I don't think this system gives scores back. So I don't necessarily have any critiques or um, notes from the judges to for improvement. So all I can do is just continue to work on what I know, work on interview, work on stage presence and keep going. However, you know, I'm realizing that the closer you get to winning, the harder it is to come back. And I want to have a real quick powwow with you guys on mental health because it's so important. So first and foremost, actually, before I get into this, um, let's kind of break things up really, really quickly. So 
uh, I was testing some makeup products that I want to share with you guys um, that really saved me during pageant week, especially in that Florida humidity. So I'm not sponsored. I bought these with my own money. Um, and I think I talked about them a little bit on Instagram, but they're two one size products that I'm going to invest in like all of the, the big sizes. So I used the Secure the Sweat one size primer. Uh, uh, mm. um, love this. However, if you are wearing like um, a gel moisturizer, this is not going to play nice with that. Uh, the first day that I used it, I was wearing a gel moisturizer instead of a cream moisturizer. And putting this product on top of that, they both rolled, the product rolled in my hands. Didn't really care for that. So, it, but I, the next day that I put my makeup on, it did uh, very, very well with a cream moisturizer. So the key to all of these pro products also um, is letting it dry down. So don't just put your moisturizer on and then put this on on top of it. It's probably not going to go the way you think. <laughs> so uh, once I secured the sweat, worked really, really great. Once I realized that the gel moisturizer under it was not going to be a thing. Um, and uh, yeah, so love this, thought it was great. And then I tried the um, one size Until Dawn mattifying waterproof setting spray. Love this. Patrick. Love this. Okay. Um, it was definitely waterproof. These two combined. My makeup did not move. Um, and it was really, really great because usually I get a little oily in my T-zone and the first makeup to go is usually my nose. But I will say that um, everything that I put on, I had to take off at the end of the day. So Makeup Girlies, I think this is a stand-up product and I would recommend that you use it. Um, and again, I am not sponsored in any way, shape or form. I bought that with my own money, but I just wanted to let you guys know that I enjoyed those products. Thanks. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about mental preparation for a pageant and um, how to bounce back after things don't necessarily go your way. So one thing that's so important is that you don't sign up to, for a pageant to win. I know that sounds crazy, but let me land. Okay. So when you sign up for a pageant, you need to, A, like I said earlier, make sure that the pageant's views and alliances al align with your moral values. Make sure that What's in the job description is, are things that you can comply to and things that genuinely get you excited, that pique your interest. Read the entirety of the pageant site to be sure that the pageant is a right fit for you. For me, World Ambassador on Pageant, on excuse me, World Ambassador Pageant on Paper was the best fit for me. Like, absolutely positively checked all my boxes. I was excited about it. And um, I knew that I could do the job should I be selected as the queen. So do that work. Then an understanding that you need to come to terms with is that this is subjective. Your worth is not determined through the scores of this pageant. Your, your ability to be great is not decided when the names are called. These are things that you need to come to terms with before you get there, okay? Um, and then after the fact, you've checked all the boxes. You've performed to the highest of your ability. You've aced all of the criteria asked of you. Um, and you, in your heart, feel like you couldn't have done anything differently. And you're standing there and you're waiting and you're waiting and your name is not called. You're heartbroken. You're confused. You're upset. And all of those feelings are perfectly okay. Okay? However, what I would recommend is not 
posting those harsh feelings on social media, take a moment to actually address what it is that you're frustrated at, not, you know, project your feelings on the organization or the people or whatever happens. Really take a moment to assess how you feel, why you're feeling it, and think about if there's anything you could have done differently. For me, um, being first runner up is actually a harder feeling than not placing at all. Not placing at all was like, well, you know, for me, and this is for me, it's like, well, I wasn't even close. So, you know, I can go home, hit the drawing board and attack it in a different way and be done. But to be first runner up was like, you know, it's so close. I could taste it so close. And then it just wasn't. And um, one thing that I personally believe is that what God has for me is for me and nobody can take that away or destroy an opportunity because if it's mine and he said so, then that's what it's going to be. So I take that, you know, knowing that God has planned for me and I journal, you know, I journal a lot. I've always been a big advocate for just getting those thoughts out of your head in a healthy and constructive way. So, you know, I journal, I called my boyfriend, I called my mom and, you know, just talked about the fullness of my experience. Um, And for me, and I think a lot of people, when you get into this position, you either feel like this is fuel for you to go on and keep going and, and, you know, maybe you keep searching for a better fit. Or maybe you go back to the same pageant next year and try it again. You know, whatever the case is, you're, you're, you're looking, you're searching, and you're just trying to find what's going to work. It's fuel. You know, you're motivated. You're like, I was that close. All I have to do is, you know, tune, fine tune a couple things, and then I can go on and I can, I can win next time. You know, that's one thought. And then other thought processes include like, you know, maybe. It's just not meant to be. Um, And for me, after this pageant, I am leaning a little bit more toward the maybe it's just not meant to be. Um, And it's not with any doom or gloom or anything like that. I've been in this industry for over 10 years. Um, I have won awards in optional competitions. I've been voted Miss Congeniality um, uh, regionally, nationally, and internationally. I've gotten a lot out of pageantry. I've learned a lot through pageantry, and I want to leave the industry, the stage, the the front-facing part of the industry, I want to leave that on top. You know, they always say a lady knows when to leave. And I've always dreamed of having a big title, you know, whether it be a big national or international title, because I know I'm capable of doing the job. But for one reason or another, um, I've not been able to pull it out. You know, I've not been able to make it happen at these big pageants. I've loved being there. I've loved competing. And I have loved watching you know, a girl who I spent a week with have her dreams come true. So there's no, there's no bitterness. There's no, there's no jolt, you know, it's just me thinking that maybe my skill set is best, best use at a different part of the industry. And that is okay. Um, Just because I'm not carrying any animosity in my heart. Um, you know, so people are going to process this the way that they're going to process it. I personally have, since being home, definitely spent a lot of time journaling. I'm not going to lie, you guys, I cried um, and not, you know, anything mean or nasty about it. I just really wanted this opportunity and I didn't get it. <laughs> so, um I will say that I had a lot of fun and I did enjoy my time. Um, I know the main question is going to be, you know, so what's next? What are you going to do? 
And right now, today, as I'm recording this, the answer is I don't know. I don't know. Uh, part of me feels like this is kind of a closing of my onstage chapter. And another part of me says, don't quote me on that. So <laughs> we'll see. Um, I will always support and participate in pageantry in one way or another, whether that's as a potential sponsor through the Empress Suite or as a choreographer or, you know, sitting on the board of, of this or that. But yeah, I love pageantry. There's no way it's not going to be a part of my life going forward. Um, I just have to continue to do the work and figure out if I want to be on stage again or not. So that's that. Um, but overall, if you're looking for a pageant system to join, I would recommend uh, USA Ambassador um, or World Ambassador. And it's my understanding that these pageants are going to be offered separately next year. Um, so you'll have the option to go to either or um, so that there's no confusion about what these are. They are two separate pageants under the same leadership. So yeah, guys, um, if you have any other questions about pageantry or would like to share your experience in a pageant, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. Again, I am Amber Bruce. This has been the Pleasant Pageantry. Thank you for joining me on the BGE Cloud. Be sure to follow us wherever podcasts are streamed. And don't forget, you can follow us on Instagram as well at BGE Cloud. And you can follow me personally at under, oh, fail. And you can follow me personally at Amber Bruce underscore. If you'd like to see more pictures and videos from my experience at World Ambassador, you'll be able to find those on my Instagram at Amber Bruce underscore. Um, I love you guys. I hope you have a fantastic day. See you next week. Bye.